All right, all right, all right. Here we go. I hope this is working. So, I good good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everybody connected to this live. So, first and foremost, I need some feedback. Very happy to be here, but I need some feedback on how this is working. So, already somebody told me, Jan Jean, Jean Lessard. Thank you, Jean. I hope you. I, I am. Uh, I'm pronouncing your name. Uh, okay. Um, 
already provided a feedback on the audio and video, but now there is the mic. So please, <laughs> yeah, a little smile from Jean, uh, help. Um, all is good for you and for everybody. He's working perfect for me. Thank you, Irina. And actually, um, Rosalina, hola, ciao, Rosalina, Mike is good. Mike is good. Okay. Um, yeah, happy to see some uh, great friends here and colleagues, but mainly, mostly friends, first and foremost friends. Um, yeah, what I was saying is that, okay, let me adjust a little bit this computer because I'm a little bit out of the camera. Yeah, yeah like that is good. So as I was saying, with this program I'm using to connect, um, I cannot see exactly. Hey, Isabel! Som e imagem muito bom. Boa noite. Boa noite, Isabel. Muito feliz de que a Isabel está aqui na questão live. Isabel from um, Portugal. Um, and I was saying, yeah, I cannot see exactly who is in the live, right? Because I'm not streaming directly from Facebook. I'm streaming from a different platform, which is StreamYard. Thank you to StreamYard for allowing for this. Um, because actually with Facebook, it was not possible to have, as you can see here, the slide and my face talking. Right, and in fact, this, as you can see in the in the slide, I prepared the face, my face in a picture. You should be able to see my my arrow, my cursor going here. You see, this is my picture here because initially I prepared this live for Facebook, uh, but yeah, it, it was sad. I I cannot talk live. I I should put my picture of myself. Right, I I said okay, maybe. I want to make this alive and fun and, and engaging, right? I, I believe people may be happy to, to have a face, a talking head, somebody talking to them, right? All, the, all of you who are connecting. So, yeah, because of that, I have to change, had to change the, the program. And, uh, yeah, but the downside is that I cannot see who is connected. So... I just can see that there are a few people connected. So let's um, uh, let's uh, let's um, you know uh, give a round of you know like a, let's see who is around. So please, each of you connected right now, uh, type maybe your name and from where you are connecting, and I would appreciate so I can see who is around and everybody can see. And we try to make this uh, a bit in uh, uh, this live somehow engaging a little bit, you know, even though, you know, I would have loved to have you all, you all in a, in a Zoom call, you know, having the opportunity to see you all, but that wasn't possible for this time. But I will set that up as soon as I can. In the next live, probably we're going to be online all of us of course if you want to show up in camera that's fantastic if not that's okay too and we have jen from montreal quebec fantastic lovely city montreal i've been there for the montreal film festival a few years ago fantastic and i've been working in quebec with sled dog i'm i'm gonna mention about that tonight um Massa or Maka or Massa from the UK. Sorry for the pronunciation. Hi Massa from the UK. I've been there working with wolves. I'm gonna talk about that later. And uh, Anita, good evening, good morning. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Isabel from Ericeira, Portugal, a beautiful place in Portugal, a fantastic place in Portugal. Then we have, let me see, let me see, Oliver Starr. Oliver, good evening. Uh, yes, Oliver, I remember you. Oliver is an executive director of Taue Wolf Center in uh, South Lake Taue. 
California, I guess. Is that California? And uh, I remember recently we have been in touch. We have been sharing a few quick messages in, in, in Facebook, I remember. But for sure, Oliver, we should, we should talk more and uh, uh, come up with some idea and sharing. Thank you for being here, by the way. And Irina, good evening, Irina, uh, from Romania, dear friend and colleague from Romania. And uh, Rosalina from Tondela, Portugal. Hi, Rosalina. I remember those times in Tondela a few years ago, rescuing animals in that area. Yeah, maybe we can talk about that, right? And uh, Massa Macarena, I'm Spanish, but live in the UK. Massa stays for Macarena, I guess, I, or Massarena. Still, I'm not sure if Massa or Maca or Macarena or Massarena, but thank you for being here. And uh, Anita from the UK, German Shepherd Dog Welfare Fund. And I guess, I, Anita, and I guess you may be from uh, an organization we are going, I mean, I'm going to, uh, to have a talk for your organization, or maybe uh, you are a partner with that organization. I guess that's the organization, German Shepherd in the UK. You maybe can confirm that. Uh, I have uh, a talk for that organization on November 10, maybe. Uh, but uh, thank you again, everybody, for being here. I hope you are hearing okay and uh, you can see the slides. Welcome to this presentation. Uh, briefly, I mean, most of you already know me, uh, some, 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 something of what I do or what I've done. Um, but I, uh, with your permission, I'm gonna make a little introduction uh, of myself, but not not to be self-referential, but um, to to explain why I got so interested throughout my career and throughout time, uh, especially in the last decade, I got so interested into the topic of domestication and why I do believe is so relevant, right? Um, First, uh, um, just let me briefly say I apologize for those. I, I, I sent a brief email as a reminder of the, 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 the of this live, and uh, something may have uh, to some uh, email addresses, and some may have not worked, may have not been working properly. So uh, I guess everybody has seen the email of others. So, uh, so that's uh, in one of one of the emails I sent. So maybe 15 people have seen the email of others. So I apologize for that. Uh, um, it wasn't my intention to violate your privacy, of course. And uh, this is not going to happen again. So sorry, this was just a technical issue. And uh, please, if you received that email, uh, be respectful of the mail of others and do not spam them, right? But uh, I'm I'm just saying that just for to make sure that 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 everybody knows that. But I'm sure anybody is going to take advantage of that. But with that said, so again, thank you for being here. Uh, a little uh, uh, some informations on my background. And by the way, you can comment anytime. I will keep an eye on the chat. Uh, although we will have some um, Q&A at the end and we can share more, uh, I will, uh, as I was saying, I will go briefly through some materials uh, relating to my experience. And then um, we will watch some videos and uh, we will, uh, you know, pick up a few principles that are related to domestication. We will talk about dogs and wolves divergence and some uh, domestication theories. And uh, there will be a little surprise somewhere. And then um, I will also provide some input on dog parents and dog guardians and why is it's so important for everybody, also for those who have dogs in their life, in their family, to know about domestication. And not just them, especially if professionals also working with dogs at any level, um, 
uh, you should know and should improve and should uh, should you know uh, look at this topic with 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 interest and with with attention right as i was saying uh, somebody knows already i've been spending quite a lot of time in bali i mean maybe not a lot a few years specifically in bali doing some field research on the behavior and ecology of free-ranging dogs of bali and let's say pet companion dogs living as an as a companion animal uh, non-human animal in in some families and and in, in in houses with people with kids right and uh, exploring the behavior of those dogs especially uh, i mean in some cases with particular attention uh, to the interaction of dogs of free ranging dogs with the local population as you can see okay here in the left is me uh, interacting with some free ranging dogs on the beach of bali and uh, on the right there is a local indonesian man a young man he's a wood carver uh, as you can see on the back there is a, a sculpture a wood sculpture and he had those free ranging dogs Oh, uh, and, and he was taking really good care of them. So exploring those those interactions of dogs and people in many places, uh, that, that and and in the particular case of Bali, that fostered even more my curiosity and interest in domestication. Because actually, as we will see, domestication is not or is not something relating to uh, to the past, but is something really relating to the present right and uh with the particular focus on dogs domestication because of course dogs have been for for what we know the first animal to be domesticated and the most important companion of humans since a few thousands years um as i was mentioning before uh i spent quite some time in Quebec uh, it was myself alone uh, with those uh, 60 sled dogs some of them were still in service others uh, were already retired let's say uh, so as you can see this one on the left uh, it was a quite old dog it was he could not see it was blind he could not be touched by anybody because he was scared and nervous. And yeah, of course, after a few, a few interactions, he was very happy to have me around. And I was very happy too to have him around and as a friend. Um, uh, but uh, again, in this particular case of Quebec, I made also some interviews that are still in my archive. I haven't... I haven't uh, uh, used those uh, yet in some projects. Uh, I have quite a large ar archive of dogs interacting with people, uh, dogs interacting with other dogs in, from several parts of the world, wolves, and also interviews to people. As an anthrozoologist, uh, meaning interested in the interaction of dogs and of animals in general and humans uh, in in different epochs, in different societies, in different geographic areas. I've done a lot of, I mean, I've collected some good interviews of people talking about dogs or interacting with dogs, right? That's also what happened in, in, uh, in Quebec. And uh, that also fostered my attention on domestication, on the long history of those dogs interacting with the humans and helping humans since thousands of years in crossing areas where no other you know and still nowadays no other uh, um, devices no other uh, machine no other you know um, vehicles can access apart from a sled carried by some dogs right so uh that really provided some interesting input on the domestication of dogs and interaction of dogs and people through time 
Uh, as I mentioned also, I spent some time in the UK uh, working with wolves and observing wolves, especially during their mating uh, period. Uh, the, the pictures you can see here are with a good friend, Sean Ellis, a, a real wolf man, and uh, me interacting with some wolves. Uh, and uh, basically I've been observing, you know, how they interact with each other. So their behavior and how their behavior changes when the mating period comes. And so uh, this is a very special time of the year. Uh, many behavior changes. Uh, they become more nervous, more alert. Uh, and that provided, anyway, a great insight on the behavior of wolves. So I can relate those observations with some studies when I study about wolves and dogs and the difference and the divergences of wolves and dogs. And I can relate what I've been observe, observing in that regard, right? I'm sure uh, that uh, our friend... Um, from from the wolf center here uh oliver would would be able to to provide a lot of input in that regard as well as uh, elena from romania uh could provide a lot of input on anthrozoology and i'm happy to have some experts around tonight because really uh, this is uh touching for me uh uh, to discuss this with, with the attention of everybody uh, around such an important topic. Briefly, I've been introducing dogs in schools in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. That uh, provided another lens, another perspective on how kids in different culture and professors and teachers and uh, principals and the parents in different cultures are though from a similar geographic area because we're talking about Southeast Asia mostly, um, uh, interact with dogs or perceive dogs, uh, what, what idea they have about animals and, 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 and it was terrific to introduce dogs in schools and, and, and help children to learn about dog behavior and uh, socialize with dogs, especially in those areas where there are a lot of free-ranging dogs around and many issues sometimes happen because people do not know how to behave. They don't necessarily know how to behave with free-ranging dogs, right? Uh, okay, Mexico. This is another important lens on the behavior of people and dogs. Really, people coming from the villages everywhere uh, from the villages, uh, villages around Mexico and bringing those dogs in one place uh, for the massive campaign, a campaign of massive um, sterilization and spy and nurturing. Uh, I'm not necessarily, uh, I do not necessarily agree with that action we have on animals, uh, but and on dogs and cats in particular. Uh, but uh, in that case, I was. Uh, participating as a, as a facilitator of the interaction and support to dogs and people. So uh, Portugal um, have been rescuing animal during, animals during uh, a terrible uh, wildfire in 2017. I, I, there, there are some people from Portugal tonight that remember that and know uh, and were supporting when that terrible uh, wildfire happened. Yeah, I'm sure um, Rosalina and Isabel and others may remember uh, that. And again, um, that's the interaction of people in, in, in that particular setting of rescuing dogs, helping dogs, helping animals, saving animals, searching animals, uh, uh, running for animals to save their life. So another important input that came into my eyes, into my memory, and, and, and again, it's not just Portugal, I've also been support, I've, I've supported the, the rescue of orangutans in, in the wildfire of Indonesia in 2015. So watching those people risking their lives, myself included, to, to, to save animals, to support animals, 
it really forced me to go deeper inside and, and understanding what, what do we have with those animals, why we want to save them. And, and, and again, what happened in domestication, which is when in, in the history we, we approached anima, other animals or vice versa, we will see that in a moment, but we really created a bond that wasn't present before, right? Uh, yes, briefly, my academic involvement. Uh, here I am with friends from around the world, uh, Indonesia, uh, colleagues from Indonesia, from uh, Hungary, from Romania. Hey, Rina, a wonderful picture of us over there. And uh, of course, um, I gathered a lot of, I mean, my experience, uh, for those who don't know, uh, it's it's also it's spread through many pro programs of education, including the academy that that that, that uh, the AEDC Academy that is online. But we will talk a little bit about that more later. So um, all of those elements brought me to be more and more interested in domestication. Apart my, by my a part of my. Uh, my particular, my interest in, in, in zoo archaeology, uh, meaning the archaeology of animals, how animals have been bored in some cases, venerated in some other cases. We find dogs uh, in some in some archaeology. We find dogs burned next to the body of people. We find dogs injured next to the body of people. We find dogs. Uh, uh, on an altar, uh, so uh, that describes how, through time and through different geographic areas, we have interacted with dogs in different ways, and those dogs have occupied a place in our perception, in our life, more and more important, right? And we can see that from zooarchaeology. So I was already uh, quite intrigued by those aspects and archaeology in general, uh, but of course, being interested in dogs, uh, that became more and more urgent. So all of those elements that I've described in my, my life experience and, and some uh, interests I had already when I was very young uh, brought me to, to this point, you know, I, I, uh, you know, domestication, such an important topic. So important also in my experience as a dog trainer, when I go into the aisles of people and I try to tell people what this animal is, what this dog is, what this dog is doing and why it's doing like that and why it's doing like that today because it has been doing it like that for centuries, for millennia. And if you understand that the, the etogram of dogs, of course, the, the series of behavior that relate to dogs, and how that uh, some behaviors in in how combined with the behavior of people create some dynamics, and we understand those dynamics, we can influence positively, and we can change everything in interaction of dogs and people. And when it comes to dog training, I mean, uh, dog behavior in the house of people, which is typically called dog training, even though I don't do dog training exactly, I do. Uh, more like a dog human facilitation and uh, and uh, family family consultation and interaction right so uh yeah again dog domestication dogs domestication again in that case is so important and i say that to all the professionals that may be here tonight if you are around this life and you work with dogs at any level you you may find in this topic if you if it's not yet on your radar really clear on your on your radar you may find on this topic some interesting hooks interesting uh, points to leverage also in your work with your clients because again domestication it's still happening nowadays and we will see again that so that became so important to me. Uh, of course, there are some uh, uh, quick points I want to highlight. Um, again, I've said that uh, this topic is important for everybody. Uh, and why dogs in particular? Because dogs are the most distributed 
mammal, one uh, among the most distributed mammals and the most thriving mammals around the world, uh, consider that for about a bit less than 8 billion people, we have about 1 billion dogs. So we have one dog for every eight people around the world. This is a massive number. This is an incredible number. So this is really a thriving species. And uh, again, uh, just to give you a few numbers, uh, some numbers, we have the 15% of this uh, global dog population that is made of those dogs living in the houses, the so say the pet companion dogs. And then we have uh, the majority, 85%, about 750 million, do million dogs are foraging dogs. So, so uh, this, is, this is very interesting because foraging dogs are everywhere around the world. And again, um, those foraging dogs, in many cases, in most of the cases, interact with people in different cultures, in different geographic areas. And so through all of those different interactions, we can find differences, yeah, actually differences, and common traits. And all of those differences and common traits are glimpse, glimpses into how domestication is still working and is still affecting the mutual inference of dogs and people uh, nowadays, right? So um, the interaction of dogs with people is core. Uh, my, my mission uh, is to resolve the anthropocentric perspective, meaning that the human being is not uh, at the center of the world. We need to reconciliate, we need to reconnect with other uh, animals, uh, and we need to recognize animal emotions, animal uh, personality, and uh, animal consciousness, possibly. And uh, understanding domestication uh, in its evolution, in its evolutionary process, uh, and bringing that perspective uh, into the approach of, as I say, the dogs um, and dogs and people and dogs related practices may really change, really nowadays may really change how people perceive and behave and interact with dogs. And that has a relevance, not just for what happened in the families, not just for what happened outside of a restaurant when there is a free, where there is a fringing dog, not for what, not just for what happened in in a litter gang where foraging dogs or dogs leave, but really for the community, because actually, the interaction of dogs and people is a mirror of that society of of every society for every society where dogs and people are present and of course the world is made of many societies of many communities if you see the interaction of dog and people not just one of course is that's not representative but if you see a few interaction if you watch a few interaction of dogs and people then you can have a glimpse into how that society works it works the same for kids and school. You see how kids goes, goes to, go to school, and you see how the school is built and how the school is managed. You have a glimpse into that society. It, it applies also to a street market, for example. You go to the street market, you get this of a certain place, you get the feeling of how that society is. It's not a full feeling. It's not a complete understanding of that society but you get the feeling just by going to that street market right and again watching a dogs and people it gives you a glimpse into how that society work and again working on domestication understanding domestication and including that while we work with dogs and people may impact those society and those communities so let's uh dive into the nitty-gritty uh, I will take the, uh, I'm not sure if I can take the audio out. No, I will leave myself in. Uh, um, but um, yes, please, uh, before starting this, please give me a feedback. If you can still hear me well, and if you can still see me well, if you can see the slide, if you can, uh, uh, everything looks good, please. Type in the chat, each of you, 
not many people. So each of you, please tell me, yes, I can hear, see, watch, video is okay, slide is okay. Please give a feedback. I give you a moment, please give a feedback. Anita, all is good, says. Anita says, all is good. Thank you, Anita. Jan says, everything is good. Irina, everything looks and sounds good. Thank you so much. Somebody else missing. I hope I can get some more feedback. And while I'm going on with this, please, um, you know, if you happen to take some quick note or some curiosity, Tudo okay from Isabel. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, please take some little notes. Maybe we can discuss later. Okay. Um, this is... Uh, somebody may have seen this. Uh, thank you, Oliver. Works for me. Thank you, Oliver. Um, this is a slide uh, I use. Or I, somebody maybe have seen this if is attending some of my programs online or in other occasions. is a slide I use uh, uh, quite often for uh, educational purpose. And, um, you know, uh, the, um, uh, it's, it's partly, let me get, let me get, let me open just a moment, a file. Uh, but anyway, you see the outers uh, of this, um, of this uh, part of this slide, the one in yellow, the part in yellow, is a drone is inspired by the study that you can see at the bottom of the slide. Uh, I cannot see it because uh, because it's covered by tools that I have in the platform, but it should be weighing in a slender uh, in 2007, if I recall it right. And uh, uh, the, the study is on the divergence of the diver on the divergence throughout domestication, throughout centuries, throughout millennia, actually. Um, um, we don't know exactly when domestication started, but uh, somebody s believes maybe 30,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago or 15 or 12, but that doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, what matter is that as is 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 uh, described in this study and this is the yellow part the ancient wolves uh some populations from the ancient wolves uh diverged and so they there was a split of course from some wolves to those who became dogs and those other that became the 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 modern wolves the recent wolves right so as you can see uh, although in the recent dogs, the nowadays dogs and the nowadays wolves, there is a very similar genetic. This is just a very little genetical difference, 0 0.5 genetic difference. And you should be able to see my cursor here. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 genetic div divergence, meaning that they have 99.6% genetic the same and 0 0.5 genetic difference right so it's really genetically really looks like the same animal but in fact it's not the same animal the recent dog and the recent wolf right they have a minimal genetic divergence but they have a very important phenotypical and cognitive div difference phenotypical meaning the different in the aspect of course, if we compare a Sarlus or a Czechoslovakian dog with a wolf, with a gray wolf, it doesn't look like a huge difference. But if we compare a Chihuahua or a, a French bulldog with a, with a wolf, there, there is a huge difference, right? So, of course, that depends on breeds and how, how far we have gone with modify, genetically modifying those dogs. That's the case to say, but again, um, with this low frequency uh, throughout time, even though the divergence was very little and still is very little genetically speaking, but that resulted in two different animals. The recent, do the recent dog and the recent wolves 
they appear to be very different in many traits. And we'll see a little bit about the, the behavior, the behavioral difference and the cog cognitive difference among those two species. Uh, or anyway, two species, or would be better to say a species and a subspecies, of course, because we have Canis lupus and Canis lupus familiaris, who is the dog, right? Uh, this green part, I added to the picture, I added to the picture this green part, where we see the ancient human and the ancient wolves. And you see the distance from the ancient wolves and the ancient human is larger than the distance from the recent human and the recent dogs, which are somehow close and overlapping. And this overlapping part somehow refers to the cognitive skills who are in many cases so similar between dogs and wolves. Like, for example, we know that, and we'll see that in a moment, we know that uh, dogs uh, looks at people and people looks at dogs, while in fact wolves do not necessarily look at look at people when they need to solve a certain a certain problem. And with that said, let's dive a little bit uh, uh, into into this aspect. I will show you a video, but let me say a last thing about this slide. As you can see, these two those two red 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 lines this one and this one yeah they are parallel they are parallel so again as i said i use this for educational purpose those two lines describes the parallel evolution and i try to share this idea that dogs and humans have evolved in parallel not necessarily in co-evolution but in parallel evolution. We do not have much time to go into this, but bear in mind that there is a difference between co-evolution and parallel evolution. And again, this slide describes a parallel evolution of dogs, dogs and humans, right? And I will tell you later where you can find more information about that. But now let's see a little video pre-recorded, but it's me explaining a few a few studies uh, on this aspect, on this divergence of um, uh, dogs and wolves' cognition. Give me a moment. Right. So when we talk about the divergence of dogs from wolves, um, Remember that dogs and wolves, as we know them nowadays, uh, had probably a common ancestors back in time, right? 15, 20,000 years ago or even more, right? So at a certain point, uh, those two species, dogs and wolves, start to diverge, to go in different um, evolutionary directions because uh, those canids that we are we are calling dogs but at that time they were not dogs yet right they were still that ancient wolves but um those canids started to gather around humans one way or the other regardless of how that happened and uh, so they start to be uh, used to human behavior and they also developed some behavior to cope better in this human environment right and vice versa human with time has have probably we human have probably uh, improved or learned some behavior from dogs right although this is still a gray area and uh, we're still trying to figure out um, to which degree we may have improved some of our cognitive skills uh, skills related to communication and reasoning and so on. Uh, also, thanks to the presence of dogs in our human evolution, right? Recent evolution, right? So, um, as I was saying, dogs and what we know as dogs nowadays diverged from wolves and they developed some uh, specific behavior, some specific skills that facilitated 
were used, were, were needed to facilitate the communication of that canid with these other species, with these two-legged species that are the humans, right? We are the humans, right? So, um, starting in, in, in the 2000, early 2000, um, several of the searches around the world uh, tried to unfold uh, those aspects that were relating to those points, right? On how, what specific, what specific skills dogs may have developed in relation to the interaction with humans, right? And so, for example, in this important study, early in, in the 2000, this is a study from 2003, a simple reason for a, and quote, and I quote, um, a simple reason for a big difference. Wolves do not look back at humans, but dogs do. Which is uh, an initial study, one of those initial studies of a long series of studies similar to that, to, to, to this one, uh, made in this case by wonderful colleagues uh, at the University of Budapest, uh, the Comparative Ethology Research Group, or also known today um, in some respects as the Family Dog Project, uh, and wonderful colleagues Adam Miklosi and Eniko Kubini and uh, Joseph Topal and others, uh, with whom I had the wonderful pleasure to collaborate uh, on, the, on the study for the Bali Dogs, right? So they made this study, which is very relevant because it starts to give that feeling, that understanding, that impression, that, that understanding actually, because this is a solid rocket science, that wolves are different from dogs and vice versa, of course, and dogs have developed specific skills to cope uh, and, and uh, in a human-centric environment and to communicate with humans, right? This is... Um, um, an interesting study because uh, puts a group of wolves and a group of dogs under certain tests. Uh, they, might, they make two tests in this study and uh, basically uh, they put some uh, um, uh, meat. The first test is to put some meat or some food in a, in a bean with the cover on it, right? So both dogs and wolves that have been previously socialized to humans are exposed to that test, right? So, uh, and they cope quite well, both dogs and wolves, in uncovering the bean and getting to the meat, right? They are exposed then to another test where they need to pull a rope uh, from somewhere and at the end of the rope there is also meat, right? So they cope similarly well uh, uh, in both test, test, tests, right? What, uh, what happened though when uh, they, the, 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 the searchers make those tests unresolvable, right? So when, uh, for example, the bean was locked, the, the cover of the bean was locked on the bean, right? And the rope also was, was impossible to, to pull it out, right? So then, Given those challenges and the fact that those tests could not be solved by the animal, uh, the, 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 the canid itself, himself or herself, uh, then we start to observe some divergences because what was observed is that dogs may made way more connections to humans in search for humans in search of help from humans in the attempt of solving that problem, while wolves uh, were made less more attempt to connect to humans in seeking human assistance. And that describes how dogs have developed that sk those skills in looking at human and asking for human help throughout their recent evolution as a dog diverging from wolves who have not gone through that evolution, right? Uh, that recent evolution, and they have remained wild. So being wild, somehow, although those wolves involved in the study were 
exposed to humans, who are socialized to humans, but still maintain that degree of wildness that uh, would not allow them to lie, to count on humans as dogs are able to do to solve a certain problem, right? Uh, so you will see here in this study highlighted some uh, core information in yellow, but basically is what I've just described. And this is one of those studies that uh, breaks, like, uh, you know, uh, it's a cornerstone studies that um, really early in the 2000s, those studies were starting to unfold the potential uh, not just the divergence of dogs and wolves, but dogs as potential model to understand also human evolution. This is also very important, right? Well, in fact, until a certain point, uh, primates were considered uh, uh, models to study human evolution. But in some regards, we started to understand that dogs were a way more interesting and valuable uh, model to understand recent human evolution. Why? Because dogs and humans have evolved in parallel, so they have somehow influenced each other on certain skills, on certain communication uh, facets, uh, certain communications um, abilities, right? So, uh, you will find this uh, um, study the link to go to this study, if you want to read this uh, in full, attached to the to this uh, lesson, and uh, you will find also links to other similar studies that came later, but are on the same, you know, navigate the same, surf on the same wave, right? So in unfolding the divergences of dogs and wolves and confirming one way or the other that wolves rely more on dogs, which makes absolute, uh, sorry, that dogs rely more on humans, which makes absolutely sense uh, for solving problems, for uh, asking help, for asking for, for in seek of information, or in seek of cues, and that makes sense because, of course, as we know, we have evolved in parallel throughout uh, uh, recent millennia. So, and this is just an example on the divergence of dogs and wolves, cognitively speaking. And uh, but there were, there would be so much more to say on this. We cannot go into many details in, 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 in the respect of this, uh, of, of, of this particular course, but bear in mind uh, that that's an important difference between what we know as dogs nowadays and what we know, we know as wolves nowadays, and that need to be, needs to be considered every time you interact with dogs, people, and in case you are lucky enough uh, to go to some wolf centers, to uh, when you interact with wolves too, right? I, I don't think you're going to interact with wolves in the wild. That's very unlikely the case. It's very uh, hard and difficult to have that opportunity, but you can still meet some wolves in the wolf centers, right? And we have many in the UK, in the US, and in other parts of the world. But yeah, dogs and wolves diverged and dogs learned or expanded some communication skills and they equipped themselves to be able to communicate very well and thrive in a human-centric environment. How that happened that those animals get in touch with humans? There are many theories, right? And this is one of uh, the most debated topics in, in, the, in the realm of uh, evolution of dogs, also evolution of humans. There are many um, shade, shady areas. Um, but uh, there are some theories I want to review uh, briefly. The individual canine selection based, that's a, a theory that um, um, sustains that uh, some humans were going into the dens of wolves and uh, picking up some individual puppies from those dens and then bringing those puppies into the human settlings, right? Into the human uh, 
groups, right? So those puppies were raised by humans. That's a, that's a narrative, very, very, very recurring narrative also in other societies. This is the case, for example, in, in different contexts and with other canines. It's, for example, the narrative that also appears in, in the history of dingoes. Anecdotes. Uh, tells that uh, tell that um, uh, aborigines were going to the den of dingoes and stealing some puppies, and then those puppies were growing with them, right? And we will find that also in South America. That's a narrative that pops up here and there, not just back in time, but also in previous, in in more recent times, but in different societies, right? It's a narrative that also comes up uh, when talking about Native Americans, so Indian of Americas. Also, there are um, tellings and stories that uh, were emerged that same narrative of natives that were bringing puppies from from woods dens and coyote dens and raising them. Right? That's one theory. Canine population based refers to actually groups of uh, wolves that were approaching human settlings because maybe the the shift from uh, uh, to the horticultural and then later agricultural uh, society uh, human were gathering more in certain areas wolves were trying to get advantage of those uh, other animals gathering somewhere because those other animals we humans were living leftover around and so they can actually integrate, let's say, at least their diet with those left over, right? Human group based refers to humans that actually is the, is the reverse. So humans start to approach some groups of animals while those animals were in their environment, in their wild environment, of course, possibly because those humans were learning how to hunt, for example, uh, from those animals, were learning some, uh, um, some, um, some hunting strategies, or maybe because they were taking advantage of the proximity of those animals because of uh, protection of a certain territory. So, of course, if we have a, a wolf, a group of wolves just on the other side of the hill or just on the top of the hill and we are down here, if there is a wolf, uh, another wolf or other bears or other, uh, other people coming around, those wolves will howl, right? So they will warn us indirectly that there is a danger. So some humans may have approached those animals to, to get those type of advantages. So dogs human coevolution, we have been speaking a bit of, of, of this, uh, is a theory, it, it relates to the mutual interaction and, and, uh, and influence that humans and dogs had over time. And cultural technological evolution refers to the fact that uh, some animals were progressively appreciated for the support that they can bring in human activities, right? While humans were settling with agriculture and uh, uh, with horticulture and then agriculture, moving some uh, materials, using the sled, humans, uh, while they were developing some techno initial technologies, modern technologies, they were also using animals more and more. So prob probably also dogs were um, involved, important, involved in some human activities and that also um, reinforced and accelerated the process of domestication of dogs, right? Talking about domestication, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> I hope everything was fine in the audio. Give me a uh, feedback. I always ask for your cooperation, collaboration. This was the slide relating to the to the video we just seen. Um, as you've seen, uh, yeah, there, there there are many studies that are revealing, unfolding the the divergence of wolves and dogs. Although I should say, thank you, Jen, um, for the feedback. Uh, I should say that while at the beginning of the 20th century, 2000, 2010, uh, more studies were somehow showing a, div uh, uh, a stronger divergence and a wolf was less inclined to 
to interact with humans. Uh, more recently, some studies came out and uh, somehow, some, in some cases from the same researchers, you know, and uh, somehow uh, debated or somehow, you know, uh, was rediscussing where some studies that have rediscussed that idea that 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 founding those foundings those findings uh so we have we are observing maybe because the the setting of the studies are different uh maybe because wolves in captivity are getting more and more used to people there may be some factors but some wolves are getting more and more interested in uh interacting with you with humans or anyway mm, we don't see such a strong separation of wolves from wolves to human and human um as we have seen early in the in, in 20 years ago for example in some studies but that's that's an interesting thing but um also in that case we will have some more examples uh i will tell you in a while uh, where you can find more example of that and uh, I, I go briefly in this slide. Uh, there are some aspects that I discuss in some educational materials uh, relating to the, the bias of the term domestication, the etymology, how this is, uh, brings us, uh, the idea of domestication um, and affects our idea of domestication. And basically, makes us thinking that domestication is something where again a human is at the center of the process while well, in fact it's not necessarily the case but again uh, some points we have been discussing uh, discussed already uh, um, just uh, a few minutes ago um, we need to move on because time is going very fast um, in something that gathers all of those ideas and my effort and, and that of some uh, friends, colleagues that are helping me also on the academy, all of those uh, materials on domestication have, has been, have been put in, together in, and tailored in a program. This is a new program that we are launching today. Uh, on the academy. It's a dog domestication program, a new program specifically on dog domestication, which can be interesting for actually everybody, for those who have dogs at home. It may be interesting for, for uh, uh, those working with dogs. It may be interesting for those working with wolves, uh, working with wolves and people, those working in the community. It may be interesting for teachers. Uh, who wants to introduce dogs, at least the idea of dogs or wolves and domestication into their classrooms, to their students. Um, and this is part of the this important effort that we're devoting to domestication and dogs and humans and their interaction. Uh, briefly here, I, I, I give you just, a, I, I'm happy to share this with you. Um, nobody has seen that yet. Uh, just uh, the, the program comes with the, with three chapters and uh, and uh, several topics that are um, that we go through. Some of the videos that you've seen are also in the in the in, in that program, and you can see them again uh, alongside many other materials. There are slides, there are downloadable PDFs, as as always. Some of you have, have attended already some programs in the AEDC Academy, some may be new, so I'm happy to, to, to give some input in that sense. There are some discussion groups if you want to discuss materials, if students want to discuss materials, right? So uh, again, this is a part of our effort to bring that, that topic out there it's really relevant for everybody and we have created again another program which is not present out there in in the internet if you go out there and you want to study about domestication and you want to have a lot of materials all in one place you don't have that and as well as you don't have that for wolves and uh oliver you're more than welcome to 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 go in, in and, and check our program about wolves and and um and tell me if you know about other program on wolves online where people can learn about wolves. 
and uh, you can you don't have a, a specific program on free ranging dogs just to mention some of the programs on our academy and just to say that we try to fill the need those niches where there is a gap where people do not find information in just one place of course if you go around the internet you find plenty of information about wolves you find plenty of information about domestication also but um programs that are from start to the end it lead you through a process and help you in understanding some aspects some topics uh, that's what we try to do at the AEDC Academy, and that's what we have done also with domestication, right? So, um, really, it's a joy to share this year, and um, um, if you can help to share the, this uh, new program, I um, it's now online, From uh, it's been published just a few hours ago to, to make it ready for this live. I post this link in the chat, uh, it's offered now for a, with a 50% off. The program is already conceived to be accessible for everybody. It's less than, I mean, it's something around $80, $80 something like that. And it is now offered in this launch period uh, for a 50% off, really to make it available uh, to as much people as possible straight away. This will not last for long, this offer, uh, but please, uh, this is the link. Check it out right now, please. And uh, so you can also provide me a feedback, you know, on how the page looks like. Uh, of course, if you, happen, if you happen to be interested and you want to enroll with this 50% uh, uh, off, it'd be, it would be wonderful to have you on board. It will not just bring you uh, to those materials, to those contents, but it will help us also. We have been put a lot of effort to create this other program, uh, self self created, self financed. Nobody is uh, is holding our is nobody is in our back. We do it out of passion, out of uh, dedication to dogs and animals and people. Um, so it's really. Uh, it, your support would be wonderful either way if you want to enroll or if you want to spread this link, this specific link to somebody that may be interested and want to access this program straight away with this fantastic opportunity at 50% off. So please check this, uh, um, this um, link right now so you can see the page of the program briefly and you can give me an idea of how it looks like uh, how um, something that you know you may notice that haven't noticed or some suggestions I would be very happy to have your feedback and uh, I leave you also a few minutes a couple of minutes just so you can do that you can grab a glass of water or a little glass of wine or juice whatever uh, whatever you may want to grab or coffee According to the time zone you are, you may need to drink something or go briefly to the restroom. And we will see each other here in just a couple of minutes, two, three minutes, four minutes. Thank you, Jean. You signed. Signed in. Wonderful, Jean. Thank you so much for your support. That's fantastic. Um, really, uh, that, um, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. And please, anyway... Share the link. Uh, this the link. The the this link will be uh, working for, uh, I guess, uh, twenty four hours. We set the timer for twenty four hours um, to give the opportunity to everybody in, in every time zone to receive the link and 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 sign in with this opportunity of fifty percent off. Um, so please share the link as soon as you can. Uh, so somebody that may be interested can access this program with this this huge discount. And anyway, if not, the program will be accessible anyway because it's actually, we make this the lower cost in our academy. All of the other programs are um, quite higher in, in the cost. You will see, but you may see if you're curious in the academy, but these really we want to make this accessible to everybody. So please share the link. And I see you in a couple of minutes. 
And after that, we are left with another video to watch, uh, a few considerations and Q&A. All right, all right, all right. I am back. I hope you little by little you are coming back. Uh, if you had the time to check the page, the, the online program page, and you want to write straight away a few comments, uh, a few ideas, something you noted, I would really appreciate that. And let's give time, everybody, to come back. And uh, if you're already there and you want to you want to also use one of those cute emoticon at the bottom of your Facebook Live, the heart, the thumbs up, the face, the, the hungry face, because you are disappointed with this live, whatever you want to use, you want to use that, use it. So we create a little bit of movement in this chat. <laughs> And uh, again, please comment just something, you know, wonderful page or I've seen, you know, that is, uh, um, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't got what this is about. I could not, I could not open the menu, the, the, the curriculum. Actually, have you seen the curriculum? You can, can you see the curriculum on the page? That would be helpful for me. To know because those are the the initial feedbacks I receive about the program. Uh, I could not. I this is published just a few hours ago, but has not been promoted anywhere. Just to Catilos, you are here finally. I can see you. Thank you for showing up. Wonderful, lovely friend from uh, California. Uh, actually, not from Mexico. Uh, she has been living. Uh, she's she's now living in, in in Mexico. Thank you for being here, Kati Rose. Kati, um, if you just uh, joined, uh, we are giving time to everybody to check the just launched online program about domestication. The link is in the chat. If you want to take a look, it would be wonderful. And if you want to provide some comment. Uh, wonderful too. 
Uh, let's move on. Uh, I want to, before continuing, no problem, no problem for being late, Kati. It's fantastic to see you here anyway. Uh, and by the way, this is a live. It should be recorded by Facebook, and it should be uh, you. You should be able to rewatch the whole live. I'm quite. Sh I'm, I mean, I'm positive about that. I'm quite positive about that. I'm not fully sure, but it should work that way. So maybe in half an hour, the live will be available uh, to to rewatch on the A AEDC Facebook page. Um, so. If you have any comment about the, the 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 program, please write it down now. And uh, I want to continue. We uh, we have uh, uh, 15 minutes left. First and foremost, uh, I'm not sure if Oliver is still around, but Ol Oliver, if you're still around and you want to put the link of your Wolf Center in the chat, you are more than welcome to do it. So we can make people aware of what you do and uh, wonderful action. Uh, it's great. It's very relevant to this discussion. So if you want to put the link of the Wolf Center, put it in the chat. And I want to say the same to Irina. Irina, if you are still around, Irina is a wonderful friend and colleague from Romania, teaches at the university there, and she Together with other colleagues, she leads one of the most important uh, event of the year about human and animals, the Anthrozoology Symposium, which is going to happen very soon, early November. Irina, if you are still around and you want to post uh, something about the symposium or a link for the people to join the symposium as uh, audience, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. And uh, I say the same for uh, others who are present here. Uh, not sure um, if Anita is still around. Anita, if you want to put a link to the website of your German Shepherd Dog Welfare Fund, we are happy to learn more about that. And if somebody from the Without Worry Canines uh, is around and wants to put a uh, a, a link to their to their page. That's fantastic too. Thank you, Irina, for showing uh, the link. And this is also to to say that this space is also to again uh, consistently with what we do to provide people with new information and to make people aware of fantastic and wonderful and interesting things happening about dogs, animals, peoples, uh, the community. Um, and so on, right? And in the, in the particular case of anthrozoology, which is so dear to me, the, the, the multidisciplinary uh, field of uh, human and animal interaction in time, space, and dimensions, let's say. So Ivina showed the link of the, the conference. If you want to check it out, the link is in the chat. And uh, let's move on. I have a, a little video, st still another video I want to show you uh, that is really about what do we do with this, uh, those informations on domestication when it comes to people who have dogs in their house, in their family, basically dog parents, dog guardians, dog caretakers. Um, this is very relevant very relevant for those people and also for those who work with dogs and people like dog trainers, veterinarians, and so on, right? I will show this video and then we will go briefly to the Q&A. And here we go. This knowledge or let's say how we can improve our knowledge in order to improve also the interaction that we have with our friends, with our doggy friends, those dogs that are part of our families. We have seen domestication and evolution to be crucial concepts to understand dogs evolution and dogs and human evolution. And um, this is a, 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 an interesting 
mm, frame an interesting perspective that we can carry and we can include in our considerations when we interact with our dogs. When we are interacting with our dogs, actually, it's not just our personal interaction with that animal, with that other species, other than us species, but actually in that very moment is the the continuation of an interaction of two species. So we can frame our interaction with the dog also in that sense. We can frame also in uh, our interaction with our dogs at that level, right? And that would provide another, as I said, level of understanding, another level of framing things, another level of investigating things, why I'm doing that in interacting with my dog, why my dog is responding this way to what I'm doing. It may be something that comes from the direct individual interaction, but it may be something that comes from thousands of years of parallel evolution, of parallel interaction of that species with our human species, right? So keep in mind that perspective when you interact with your dogs and you will see that that provide will provide you with an extra layer of reading the reality that surrounds you and of course improve improving understanding about the domestication and evolution and study studying those aspects a bit further a bit more than what we have also doing in this course it would be beneficial to grasp even more that perspective and include that perspective when we, when we interact with our dog, but also with, with dogs that we encounter, with dogs that we meet. It may be dogs at park, it may be free-ranging dogs in a place where free-ranging dogs are present. Because of what we have just said about uh, parallel evolution and uh, domestication process of dogs, uh, we need to be aware that we are continuously influencing each other as species. And that happens at a species level, but also at, a, at an individual level. So the dog that we have in our family is uh, influencing us, is influencing our um, emotional uh, life is influencing our mental life, our psychological life, and vice versa. We need to be very aware of that. We are important influencing our dogs, especially because dogs are very sensitive, are very receptive, is a very receptive species, and that's the reason why they have been thriving living around humans. So we need to be really aware of that, and we need to use that lens in order to read, to read certain situations. Sometimes we do not understand the behavior of our dogs, why is behaving like that, what's going on, and we put a lot of focus on the dog himself or herself, but actually what's going on relates to the interaction of that dog uh, to other members of the family and we sometimes we forget or we are a little bit um, not necessarily so aware of the fact that our behavior is affecting our dogs, right? So how we are influencing each other and how we can use that as a lens to read and frame better the interaction we are having with our dogs. Certainly this is another aspect that we can um, include in our considerations and we can also improve our knowledge and understanding about that through reading, through thinking about that when we interact with our dog, through making questions to a dog trainer that maybe has been involved in our life uh, for some reason, somebody, a behavior consultant that came to give some tips or to adjust, to, to address some situations that happens. So we must be curious and interested in this level and also be introspective and look at our own behavior because through our own behavior we are maybe influencing, actually we are surely influencing our dogs and interestingly through our behavior we can change the behavior of our dogs. 
how we can apply those knowledge yeah. or like okay so as you've seen yeah the end of this slide that is still uh, all of this space down here um actually there are other points that i make but uh, there is no time to go with this uh, to see all those points, but basically, yeah, what I what I've the, the, the um, you know, bottom line is that uh, we need to work with people in families, those people that that have those people who have dogs in their families, because if they get a sense of what domestication is, and if they get the sense of the fact that they are they are still contributing to domestication, that they are part of a process that's coming from millennia and century, they will perceive themselves differently, and they will probably act differently, and they will uh, perceive their dogs differently, and that may provide uh, a new ground on which to build a new relationship of those people with their dogs, especially when there are some behavioral problems, uh, which is often the case uh, when they contact a dog trainer or a, 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 a behaviorist or a or a vet a behaviorist and uh, or a behavior consultant and so on. Right, but uh, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, we we really need to uh, move on with uh, with our work. And uh, we just have, <clears throat> sorry, pardon, uh, a few minutes left. And uh, I invite you, ah, yeah, you can see, yeah, those are other, other things on, on, on that video. But yeah, we are at Q&A time. We have just a few minutes. Uh, please formulate uh, some question if you have and if you want uh, some uh, brief uh, uh, questions and meanwhile i want to make you aware that in the chat uh debbie has posted uh the website of the german shepherd uh, dog uh, welfare fund if you want to check that and uh janice has posted the page the web page of without worry canine education um fantastic to have you uh showing your work on this live again this is also this live also wants to be uh, aligned with our uh, effort and mission to be the space for others to to show their effort and their work and uh, <clears throat> i post again also the link to the program if you want to check that please uh, check it again or check it now uh, if if you haven't yet and q a do you have any question we have just a few minutes maybe a couple of minutes any question any comment any considerations you are more than welcome to get the chat crazy yeah you can i mean you can also type that thing on the on the keyboard blah, 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 and, and and something comes out you know uh, i i take it as a as a compliment anyway so but uh, yeah please um <clears throat> let me know what you think of this presentation or the program or if you have some ideas about domestication i know it may it may not be the best way to interact through the chat uh, of course i would have loved to have you all on zoom or something like that in video but uh yeah for this time it's gonna be like this um Whatever you may want to share, share it now. And meanwhile, I know you are mesmerized by those dogs that I put on this slide. Yeah, you may be mesmerized by those dogs. Those are all lovely dogs from Bali. Those are all dogs from the study on the Bali dogs, the Bali dog study. Uh, one I've been doing, observing uh, dogs in Bali. Liliana showing up, Liliana, dear friend from Portugal, little sister from Portugal. I mean, little in the sense that she's dear to me. Um, welcome on board, Liliana. So I was saying that those dogs <coughs> are Bali dogs, uh, part of the study and observation I've been doing in Bali. For this time, I had this slide ready. Maybe another time I can show you those dogs in Quebec, I have plenty of pictures of them, plenty of video 
or dogs from Mexico or from um, southern Italy or from Romania or the UK or Portugal or Spain or France or Thailand or Malaysia or um, um, Australia, Tasmania. I mean, yeah, uh, keep an eye on upcoming uh, upcoming uh, events because uh, there will be pictures involved. Okay, let me show. Oh, there are some comments here. Um, Anita, I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Liliana gives me a heart and I give you a heart back, Liliana. Thank you so much for showing up, even though a little bit late, but it's a great to have you here. Janice, could sharing a better understanding of domestication help to move away from the idea of ownership of dogs? Absolutely, yes. Because actually, as we said, you, maybe you missed that part we said at the beginning uh, or somewhere after the beginning. Uh, the 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 mission is to move by helping people understanding ab about domestication is to move their perspective from the anthropocentric from an anthropocentric perspective to a um, a more uh, to a broader perspective where people do not feel themselves to be the, uh, the part of the species who dominates the world but they also reconnect themselves as an animal with other animals, to other animals and to nature. And when that shift happens, that animal that they have in their house, that dog becomes part of that animal world, of that natural world to which they reconnect. And so their perspective will change from their idea of owning that animal to having that animal not honing that animal, but having an animal as having an husband, as having a son, as having a mother or a father, as having a daughter, right? Having in the sense of being part of the same family. So absolutely, Janice, thank you for the question. Absolutely. And uh, I go way deeper on that aspect also in the program that, I, uh, that has just been launched in the Academy. Debbie says... Thank you, Marco. Very interesting as usual. And I am enjoying doing one of your course at present. Thank you, Debbie. I remember you're enrolled. Thank you for being there. Irina, thank you, Marco. Brilliant presentation as ever and great program. Thank you so much, Irina, for showing up to be here and to be a wonderful friend and colleague. And uh, I'm excited to be soon on the conference that we're going to have, the Anthropology Symposium. That is going to be soon. Again, the link is in the chat. Uh, go check that link if you are willing to learn more on the conference and participate as an audience. Jean, you think which hypothesis holds the road better? Wolves change into dogs by approaching and feed from our trash, and we domesticated dogs, not wolves, or if we domesticated wolves. I, 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 I'm not sure I read it right, but but I got I got the idea, I mean, what, what hypothesis prevails over others? To some extent, you know, Jean, uh, wonderful question, thank you. To some extent, doesn't really matter in, 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 in that probably all of those hypotheses are true to some degree because domestication is such a complex event that happened in so many places, in so different ways, in so many modalities, and we have more and more insight about that and probably there are, there will be other theories that will come up that will show up uh while we will find maybe another wolf uh, uh, in, uh archaeological findings and finding or or other inputs you know so uh probably all of those theories are true and so that's also my perception you know i value all of them even though there is a huge debate but debates are part of science and are what help us to understand better what happens and what happened in 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 the past but from from our perspective and especially from the perspective of wanting to help people 
in changing their view of other animals, of dogs, and how they perceive themselves in this world. So in that sense, all the um, all the perspectives, all the all the theories are good, and I value all of them. So uh, thank you, Jean. That's uh, the short answer. Of course, that would require a lot of more time to to be elaborated. Thank you. Cathy Rose says, as always, thank you for your dedication to our dog friends. Thank you so much, Cathy Rose. Thank you so much, Cathy Rose. Janice, yes, I missed the start of the talk. And yeah, uh, I believe again that you may be able to watch uh, this, uh, the recording of this uh, live. Um, in maybe in half an hour, it will be available on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook and the on the AEDC page, the same page where you're watching. So there, there should be a recording. Hopefully it's like that. Um, no problem, Liliana, if you were in late. Uh, thank you again, Janice uh, and Jeanne. I like to believe we domesticated dogs, not wolves. I am emotionally attached to that theory from Coppinger. Yes, of course, um, from an emotional perspective, Sometimes I, I I tended to go there too. Uh, of course, when uh, when we dive into the topic, we see that uh, uh, that every theory has some interesting aspects to bring to the table and to the discussion. But anyway, the important thing is that we learn more about domestication first, and secondly, that we spread this information we spread that knowledge about domestication in the sense that that may help people in understanding more about animals about dogs and ultimately about themselves because that's the point we are here to understand who we are as a species and we are here to rediscuss and reformulate our being in this life, in this plan, on this planet, as an animal among other animals, and not as a dominating species over other animals, right? But as an animal among other animals and in nature, and that's the perspective that we are trying to uh, to spread and to help people in realizing, right? Uh, but again. This is a huge discussion. Maybe we are going to make another live on this specific topic. If you want to click on one of those hearts that you have in your life or one of those thumbs up, and this is your last chance to express your, um, your appreciation for this live, again, please uh, check the new online program of our AEDC Academy. Here is the link again. Check it now. And uh, this um, um, uh, uh, 50% off will be available for 24 hours. So if you want to enroll or if you want to please help sharing the voice, spreading the voice, sharing this, this link for those friends or people you may know that may be interested in uh, learning about domestication from this perspective, uh, please share it. And again, thank you to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you all. Uh, it was fantastic to gather uh, those materials and share all of those with you all. And thank you for finding the time uh, to, to be here. And uh, I hope to see you all again soon and anytime you can reach me out of course uh oh there is some bibliography here that i used for this presentation and for the program and again thank you uh you can reach me out to that email address this is my main email address and uh, on the top you have the academy website which you have been visiting already through the link and this is my personal main website, marcoada.com. Thank you so much again. It was fantastic. It was great. 
Um, and I hope to see you all soon online or maybe hopefully live soon somewhere. Big, big hug to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye.